welcome to the instructional part of the video. You can get tabs and backing tracks if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com. For information about the sound tools I'm using today, go ahead and click on the description box underneath in your YouTube player. One last thing, a sincere thank you to everybody who supports me in all the ways that you do. There is now one new way which you can support me. I am on patreon.com backslash Eric Haugen Guitar. Now to the lesson. Okay, what we have, we have an A minor. So I'm immediately doing one of my favorite A minor variants, which is an A minor with the addition of the ninth. Um, so what we got here is, you know, we start with an A minor, and you're trying to get this B tone, which is the fourth fret of the G string. So you have to carefully get your pinky out to that tone there. And yeah, I do an upwards rake. Yeah, listen to that analog delay. Yes, the, the Maleco Echo 16, 616 analog dark delay, to my ear, beats the Boss DM2 classic. I've owned them both. So that's just a neat evolution of an A minor chord. It's going to stay on A minor for four bars. So I immediately do my first favorite use of a diminished chord, which is, you know, this is, yeah, this is classic Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds slash birthday party slash other stuff that's like that. Jesus Lizard, I think, also. Uh, you can just throw a diminished chord right on top of a minor chord just to be evil. So what we got, you know, if this is A minor here, I'm just thinking, well, there's our A, there's our C, there's that flat five. Yep, and you know, being mean with it. So that's seven, five, four. And then I go up to an A minor up here, which is the A minor that looks like a D minor. Nine, uh, nine, ten, eight. You know, uh, if we're doing caged, it's that one, but I'm only doing that one. Again, yeah, making sure I stab them and then letting the delay do its job. And then I was like, uh, I'm trying to get to uh, an E7, which I'm, I know is right here because that's the other main chord that we're dealing with. You know, just a classic one, five, five, one progression. So I was like, well, I'm gonna go up. I knew I wanted that, that, that diminished note again, that, or the blues note, the flat five. And then I knew I wanted a leading tone to get to the leading tone, I guess, if you want to think of it that way. You know, there's my ultimate target because that's the, the, the G sharp of the E. So I went 10, 8, 8, 9. Yes, yeah, so that's going from, you know, resolving there to that E. And then we're at, we're at our second use of how I like to use a diminished chord. We're on an E7, five chord in the key of A minor. You know, an E7 flat nine, this gets music theory E, is the same as an F diminished. So I just, they're interchangeable to me. So I do a run that's... Just kind of playing around with a giant E7 flat nine arpeggio. Nine, six, five, seven on that G, which is, you know, still part of that E7. Five, four, what'd I do? Oh, and then a six on that, you know, that's our G sharp, and then, so yeah, there's a lot. It's kind of, I guess, the same thing three times. This is the, one of the main joys of subbing into diminished. Diminished, once you realize it's nothing more than an endless sequence of minor thirds. It makes it so you can move around pretty easily. So I'm still on that E7. I'm going, you know, oh, four, two, four, five. And like, well, I could just move that same thing three frets up because I know that in a minor key, you can sub a diminished on the five. 
So yes. And so up there, oh, seven, five. There's that weird F natural, which you wouldn't think to put on an E7, but in a minor key, you totes can. And then it's coming back around to A minor, so I did a big slow bend on the on that D note there, pushing it up to become the fifth of that chord. And then hit a big, that's just an aggressive ninth, so that's um, five and seven there. So I'm thinking back to this chord, you know, your A minor. And again, I'm on an A minor, I'm like, hmm, hmm, I bet I can just drop a diminished arpeggio on it, which, you know, Which is what I do. You know, so diminished because it's all minor thirds. I'm like, well, that I don't start on that note. I start on the seven of the B, which against an A, gnarly. Yeah, just these, these, you know, they instantly make your guitar playing scrunktastic. So seven, five, seven. Six, and then I kind of backpedal it, kind of turn it into a blues lick. Seven, six, five, three, five, four, and then on, when it gets to that E, I'm actually on the B there, two, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I did a little T-Rex <laughs> uh, hybrid picking there. Rotate. These two grab those upper ones. But it doesn't do that. Does it again. Again, diminished. So I'm on an E7. I'm like, all right, I'm on an E7. I'm going to go ahead and turn that into a diminished. But, you know, you built it off the F. Minor third, minor third, minor third, which means I could just move that up three frets. Yeah, so again, on the E7, if you put a flat nine on there and analyze it, you actually end up with a diminished. So that's this intersection between the five chord and a diminished that's a pretty big deal. So that's why I can go nine, five, nope, nine, seven, six. Move it up three frets, 12, 10, nine. And then I modulate the song to D minor just to be different because I wanted one more use of a diminished. 10 and 10 on the G and B. That's just, that's out of that shape. And then I just did a little pretty. That's just nice. <laughs> That's just playing out of this D minor structure here. Five, six, five, seven, five, seven. And then it went down to a C. And so here's the third way you can use a diminished. So we subbed it in for the A minor. We subbed an F diminished in for the E7, the other way they get used as a, as a walk between chord, because it's going to go, it was on D minor, it went down to C and it's gonna do a, a C sharp diminished before it gets back to D minor. So I just, to, to, to show that, I, I do that. So that C sharp diminished, which yeah, that, that always works by the way. If you're going to a chord, you can always stick a diminished one note behind. You know, it, it'll always give you, and you hear Paul, what, he does that in Blackbird. The, that whole yeah Paul's doing that in Blackbird believe it or not so the C sharp diminished four five three four very hard shape to remember pro tip here's a C7 in it raise the root one and you got a C sharp diminished C sharp diminished C7 C sharp <laughs> that's hard to say C sharp diminished C7, C sharp diminished, C7. That's how I remember that form. And then I just did an inversion of D minor. 
which is, you know, based out of that, but I don't know why, I just did there. Three, two, three. I don't remember exactly what I did there. Yeah, so it's going from D minor, then it's going to drop to G. So I did a little O oh, two, O oh, three, two, O oh, two. And then it's going to do from that G, because it knows it's going back to A, I put another diminished walk between. A G sharp diminished walk between there again. You know, that you yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing there. So it went... And then as it kind of fades out and cycles around again, I'm just kind of regurgitating similar ideas. So to review, root one, throw a diminished right on the A minor. Option two, when it gets to E7, you observe that when you put that F in, well, schnikey, that really just makes an F diminished. And then the third way is as a walk between the C, to the D minor as well as the G to the A minor. Those are three ways I see diminished used most oftenly. There you go. Let's talk about the diminished. So one more time to review the uses of diminished. Number one, you can just throw it on a minor chord to make the chord sinister, evil, and messed up sounding. You know, if that's right for the song that you're playing. Two, there's the interesting thing where on that five chord in minor, once you add the F to it, which is the flat nine, I'm getting sleepy talking about it, but let's, let's try and stay awake. You've actually created a diminished chord that's a fret higher, which means though you've created, you know, diminished chords everywhere because diminished chords just repeat themselves every three frets. So it's a way to deal with the five, the five chord in minor. And the last way you see them commonly get used is as a ramp. Usually, you know, you, you know, if you have a whole step distance between two chords, that diminished can get right in the, in the middle. And uh, usually sounds best landing on a minor, but you can land on a major too. <laughs> anyway, lots of stuff to play around with there. And you know, pretty cool sounding solo if I might say so myself. Have fun with that. Thanks for watching.